Wearables in their ideal version can be beneficial to your life by helping you be observant of things that you wouldn't normally know about and remind you of things that you can't easily access. So in the instance of notifications, hopefully that's going to be something like telling you about an important message, important phone call, something to help you not go to your phone. Also, it could help you be aware of things like health conditions or your general fitness level, things that you might want to keep on top of more. When buying a smartwatch, a couple of things you want to look out for. First of all is if your phone supports that smartwatch. It's not a given. The iPhone works with the iOS. Samsung's gear watches work with Android, but don't work that well with the iPhone. You want to keep in mind things like durability, including water resistance. Can you shower with it? Can you swim with it? And what are its extras and features? Does it have contactless payments? Does it have music? And how does that work? Does it sync easily with your music collection? Uh, does it have things like fitness functions, such as heart rate, GPS? Can it make phone calls? Or can it even have a microphone and be used as a speakerphone? Right now, Apple is, is dominating a lot of the market with the Apple Watch, and it is really the best at being an overall deep smartwatch, one that has apps, one that has voice control, one that plays music and also tracks your fitness. As long as you have an iPhone, that's your best option. I still think Fitbit does a really great job. Uh, the question is, which one do you get? If you're looking for something that does everything, including make payments if your bank supports it, or GPS, or even a little bit of music, which is not so great at, Fitbit Ionic is a full-fledged smartwatch, and you can also swim with it. When buying a fitness tracker, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. Battery life is definitely key because fitness trackers could last as short as a day and as long as a year. Also, if you're a swimmer, if someone wants to wear this in the shower, you want to make sure that it's water resistant uh, and not just splash proof. If you're a runner, if you're someone who's really serious about exercise, you want to make sure that it's got not just heart rate, but GPS for tracking runs. And what does it hook into? For fitness, uh, you may be going into a centralized app. Samsung uses S Health. Google uses its fitness app. Apple has its activity and workout features. Wearable tech has, still has a lot to overcome. Battery life is a big limit. Hopefully they'll get a lot better at lasting longer between charges. And I also think that these devices are gonna become more independent of your phone. They already kind of are, where some of them allow you to make phone calls. I think also you may wanna look for areas other than the wrist. Right now there are a couple of options. There are fitness tracker rings, there are fitness trackers built into clothing, into socks, into shoes. You might have another place that you might be able to wear it in the future that might not be the wrist, and then maybe even combine sensors uh, down the road. Right now that's not ideal, but I think it may be a, a long-term solution as opposed to just buying a fitness smartwatch.